How do you control this robot? In this video, I will explain one of the most important concepts in robotics, inverse kinematics, using a ball balancing robot. So what exactly is inverse kinematics? Let's consider a robot like this. Here, we have a motor that rotates this link. The length of the link is L1, and the motor's angle is theta. At the end of this link, there is another motor that rotates the next link. The length of this second link is L2, and the motor's angle is phi. Now, what are the coordinates of the robot's arm's endpoint in this case? Using trigonometric functions, we can express it like this. With this equation, we can determine the robot's posture when the motors are rotated to arbitrary angles. This is known as forward kinematics. However, forward kinematics is not very helpful for controlling a robot. The concept of forward kinematics is like saying, if I rotate the motor to this angle, the robot happens to take this posture. What we actually want to know is, what should the motor angles be to achieve the desired posture of the robot? This is the concept of inverse kinematics, and in this example, it becomes the following function. Let's use this function to actually move the robot. If we want to move the robot's end effector to the point 4, 3, substituting 4, 3 into this function will give us theta and phi, which tell us how much to rotate the motors. If we then move this point to 9, 7, 15, 4, and so on, we can find the necessary angles for each position, allowing us to control the robot freely. Thus, finding a function that takes the desired posture of the robot, such as x and y, and outputs the necessary motor angles is what inverse kinematics is all about. Now that we understand what inverse kinematics is, let's move on to the ball balancing robot. So what kind of robot is this? This ball balancing robot has three motors, each of which rotates these black links. At the end of the black links are bearings that allow the white links to rotate smoothly. Additionally, there are ball joints connected at the end. A ball joint allows the attached part to rotate around a single point. This type of robot is called a 3RRS parallel manipulator. Revolute joint, or revolute joint, spherical joint. And there are three such links. This robot can do the following two things. It can tilt the platform in any direction, like this. And it can freely change the height of the platform. Additionally, an important point is that the three motors control three types of movements of the platform. Rotation around the x-axis, rotation around the y-axis, and vertical movement along the z-axis. Now that we understand the structure of the robot, Let's finally think about how to solve the inverse kinematics of the 3RRS parallel manipulator. How can we rephrase solving the inverse kinematics for this robot? We can say it is determining the angles to which the three motors need to rotate to achieve the desired posture and height of the platform. The posture of the platform is represented by its normal vector n, and the height h is precisely the height of the center point of the platform. Let's define the coordinate system as follows. The xy plane is taken at the same height as the rotational center axis of the motors. The yz plane is parallel to the motor in the front of the robot, and the xz plane is taken like this. We are now ready. First, let's consider how we can express the coordinates of the ball joint using n and h. This ball joint exists on the line of intersection between the platform plane and the yz plane. First, it would be a good idea to find the equation of this line. The platform plane passes through its center coordinates, 0, 0, 0, h, and has a normal vector n. If we denote the coordinates of the ball joint as x, y, z, the vector from the platform center to the ball joint is x, y, z minus h. This vector is perpendicular to the normal vector n, so their dot product is 0. We obtain the following equation. This is the equation of the platform plane. The equation of the other plane on which the ball joint lies, the xz plane, is of course y0. Solving these two simultaneous equations yields the following equation. This is the equation of the line. What we need is not the line, but a point. So we need to find another condition. Look at this robot. The distance from the center of the platform to the coordinates of the ball joint is always constant. Therefore, let's denote this distance as L. Therefore, as we can see from this diagram, the length of this side is x, the length of this side is h minus z, and this is L. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we obtain the following equation. By solving this equation together with the previous equation, we can determine the coordinates. 
First, we transform this equation as follows, but it's important that x remains positive. Next, substituting this equation into that one, we obtain the following result. You can see that the coordinates of the ball joint are expressed in terms of the normal vector and the height. It's also noteworthy that the coordinates of the ball joint at this position depend only on the tilt alpha in the x direction of the platform plane. This indicates that no matter how much you move the motor driving this ball joint, it cannot tilt in the y direction. This is clearly shown in this video. To tilt in the y direction, you need to use the power of the other two motors. Now we have determined the coordinates of this ball joint. What about the coordinates of the remaining two ball joints? In fact, we can find the coordinates of the other two joints by following the exact same steps. To show the results, this ball joint is represented by this equation, and the other ball joint is represented by this equation. If you are interested, please try calculating them yourself. Now the first step is complete. Take a moment to relax with a cup of coffee, and then we can move on to the next step. Now for the next step, we have determined the coordinates of the ball joint to achieve the platform's normal vector n and height h. Next, let's consider the motor angles required to achieve these ball joint coordinates. Let's consider the following diagram. This is the same link on the xz plane as before. The ball joint is located here, there is a pin joint here, and the motor is located here. Let's denote this as L1, this as L2, and this as L3. The coordinates of the motor are L3, 0, 0, and the coordinates of the ball joint, which we determined earlier, are A, B, C. These coordinates are known. Next, let's denote the coordinates of the pin joint as X, Y, Z, and name this point P. These are the coordinates we want to find. First, point P lies on the sphere centered at the ball joint coordinates with radius L1. Therefore, the following equation holds. Next, P also lies on the sphere centered at the motor's coordinates with a radius of L2. Therefore, the following equation also holds. Additionally, P must always lie on the XZ plane, so the equation Y0 also holds. Now, solving these equations will allow us to express P in terms of the known constants A, B, C, L1, L2, and L3. It is quite complicated, but let's do our best. In the intermediate steps, since P is on this side of the YZ, plane, we select the plus. Since the equation is complex, let's denote this part as A. Additionally, let's denote this part as B. Now we have x. What do the plus and minus signs mean? There are two possible arm configurations to achieve the coordinates of this ball joint. This one, and this one. In this case, we are considering the configuration where the value of x is greater in the positive direction. This minus e is a positive number, and adding it with the plus sign results in a larger value. Therefore, the correct x can be expressed as follows. Substituting this into the equation, we can also find z. However, a and b are expressed as follows. This representation may not be very neat, but when written in a program, the computer will calculate it for you. So it's not actually a problem. Now that we have determined the coordinates of the pin joint, we haven't yet found the motor angle. Don't worry, we are about to incorporate the essence of the angle. We have expressed the pin joint using this equation, but point P can also be expressed using the angle theta. As shown in this diagram, using the angle theta L3 and L2, it can be represented as follows. Now since this equation is long, let's denote it as DEF. Using this, we can establish the following equation. Solving it gives us the motor angle theta. We did it! The inverse kinematics is complete! All right, there are two more motors. However, we can find their angles using the exact same method. To show the results, this motor will have this equation, and the other motor will have this equation. What did you think? If you've watched this far, you must really be into this stuff. It might have been boring with all the equations, but inverse kinematics is an incredibly important concept for freely controlling a robot. Now, you can also build a ball balancing robot. You can download the 3D model data of the robot and the code with the inverse kinematics already programmed from GitHub. If you are interested, please give it a try. See you in the next project. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.